RimWorld is a game of kindness, peace, and above all, community. But today, we're going to be taking a slight detour from the traditional RimWorld experience by making a hotel for the Dark Gods. Fully stocked with state-of-the-art facilities, friendly biological monsters, and crippling insanity, we set out to summon Cthulhu and end the world. In starting our morbid motel, we had one colonist, Flimflam, and a very special pet, of which some of you might remember. Our beginning map was a mountainous mess with a river split down the middle. On one half, we'd be building the hotel of our dreams. On the other, we'll talk about that later. We built the basics of our colony while our main defense was Rudolph the Dark Young. I mean, what's more frightening than a giant tentacle monster with six food bars? Unfortunately, Rudolph is like the hungry caterpillar on steroids because his metabolism is insane. Dark Young are also predators, so whenever he wasn't hunting animals, he was recovering from injuries from hunting animals. While we were expanding the colony, our first set of visitors called in, but we'd have to refuse all guests until we got our complex set up. We crafted our first gun and proceeded to hunt down some animals for food. Flim Flam also started our quest into the occult, beginning with this eerie tree. After shattering his mind against the tree, he wrote an item key to starting our cult, the Grimoire of the Old Ones. In order to create a cult, we need to research the old ones and actually discover them, which is where the Grimoire comes in. By writing it, we can build a special research bench, but the more we research, the more insane we'd get. So for now, we put off the cult research until we got more colonists and dedicated researchers. In the meantime, we hunted more animals, kited an electric goat around for about 12 hours, and watched Rudolph dumpster the local animal population. Our first raid came around, and wish they hadn't. Some iron husk beetles also randomly joined, which was insanely good because they're one of the the best farm animals in the game. They have massive armor, can be trained to guard, and produce free steel. Their downside is that they eat a ton. Not like they could exceed Rudolph though, who is bringing a whole new meaning to eating a horse. Another raid came in, this time with a really strong colonist I wanted to recruit. Thanks. Luckily, a beggar showed up who needed protection from debtors, fearful they might hunt her down. Happily, we obliged. A set of roaming monstrosities also came into the region, not realizing we had our own monstrosity. With the animals dealt with, we accepted a guest for a masterwork gun link. They arrived, sweaty. Truly on the Sigma grind, they stole my drugs and set my house on fire. This triggered a mental break from our prisoner, or, well, it could have been the malnutrition, heat stroke, and sanity laws, but who's counting? Apparently, Rudolph wasn't exactly a positive influence either. She hit back with a conversion of her own, knocking Flim Flam from 100% certainty to... This totally didn't lead to a prison break, another berserk, and getting mauled. On the bright side, we eventually recruited Galga, some sheep joined the colony, and we sealed off the insects. Although on that topic, we witnessed two back-to-back -back raids best described as a clown fiesta, and traders who did the exact same thing. At the same time, a transport pod crashed, allowing us to rescue McJolly. This got followed up by a salvage trader, which allowed us to buy another prisoner. With soon to be four people at our colony, our progress to forming a cult was going well. A bit too well. While mapping out more of the colony, I was greeted by a critical alert. Apparently, Galga had gone and walked herself into an insect hive and had only hours to live, so it was up to Flim Flam to save her. We'd just recently trained the Iron Husk Beetles to guard, so I gathered our small horde of animals and pushed into the hive. The Beetles AI was a little derpy, but with the ridiculous armor, they powered through the insects. We narrowly saved Galga, but almost lost Rudolph from blood loss. But ensuring Galga lived was extremely important, because we needed enough colonists to start our cult. On the one hand, we needed people to construct and run our hotel. On the other, our two prisoners were researchers, so as soon as they were recruited, we could begin researching the old ones. We did get an inspired recruitment, but I still needed to convert our prisoners. A little trick you could use, I used the inspired recruitment to recruit the prisoner, then immediately rejailed them for conversion. But because I had recruited them, they were now in our faction, so instead of needing to re-recruit them, I could just release them after I was done the conversion. While we were waiting for the conversions to happen, a quest popped up to have some tribals raid, which was perfect because we did need more food. Incidentally, a genetics trader walked in, iced the first raid, then fought a second raid for free. Not long after did Barb Fury get converted and recruited, although I did forget about McJolly for a cold minute, which cost him eh, nothing special. Now at three colonists, I started our Forbidden Knowledge Center and Occult Beginnings. Now, in order to effectively run a cult, we'd need a room for community building activities. We started an outline, then recruited our fourth colonists, activating our special role. It only made sense for Flim Flam to get the job. As I said before, researching cults 
drains sanity. Losing sanity basically guarantees mental breaks, but strangely improves your stats. With some progress, we built our altar and fittingly floored it with bone. This officially founded our cult, or for tax purposes, the religion cult. By founding the cult, we also attracted a free cultist who was a psychopath and cannibal. Simultaneously, our researchers discovered Bast. Our first eldritch god, Bast is the god of cats, which is all the info I needed to ignore her. But movies I regret on behalf of the producer aside, the main base was coming along nicely. Our cult room was done, the Iron Husk Beetles laid their first egg, and Barb Fury got an inspired tame. So naturally, I tamed the best animal in the region, a literal rock. Now, while other things were going well, our cult wasn't actually thriving yet. You see, when a cult gets founded, not everyone will join right away. Those colonists will take matters into their own hands, which basically means killing people. An easy fix is, of course, some simple voluntary brainwashing. By spamming this button, we can just lock everyone in church until they love Cthulhu. 48 hours of indoctrination later, everyone's mind was miraculously changed. And just to reward our faithful cultists, our schedule had sermons every day for the rest of time. After the Great Reformation, we discovered Sathanukas, Sathuaga, Satha, I don't care, uh, because we also found Cthulhu. With that, we could start dedicating our sermons to him, allowing us to gain his favor. More favor means more interactions, but with enough favor, we could actually summon Cthulhu into the world. Before we could summon Cthulhu, we were a long ways off. One thing we'd need for the ritual was to create our hotel. That way we could befriend the local visitors en masse. To accomplish this, we researched microelectronics to be able to contact other factions. This would allow us to invite them to visit as soon as we built the hotel, which we'd started construction on. In the meantime, we had a buffalo attack stopped only by the thickness of rock, another inspired tame, which we used to tame Megasloth Kosloth, and a transport pod brought us Norbert, who was promoted to Deputy Educational Assistant to the Dean, or DEAD for short, because we just started human sacrifice research. As we hold more sermons, our favor goes up. Higher favor also gives us access to powerful sacrifice rituals, which we were working towards. Our secondary research priority was genetics, displace eldritch and animal DNA to create some interesting stuff. Unsurprisingly, eldritch monsters are slightly overpowered. While we waited for the research, a quest popped up to protect a downed transport ship. I accepted and immediately almost went to war with the Empire over this guy. Cataphract armor is okay, I guess. Hey, combat passions aren't too bad. Holy shit! Needless to say, it took all my willpower to not arrest him. He did down some people so we could get two prisoners. One prisoner. Goodbye, Giga Chad man. But hello, Thrombos. Because in genetics, Thrombos have something no other animal does. An insanely strong colossal gene. Colossal genes essentially allow us to make the most powerful of animals with our genetics research. Think of it like taking Rudolph and adding Thrumbo DNA. But we did need to kill the Thrumbos and my weapons were pretty bad. I logged all my colonists and animals up towards the Thrumbos to aggro and circle beat them one at a time. Okay, uh, depression. Now, I'm lucky that Rudolph and the Kosloth barely beat the first Thrumbo and distracted the second one so we could shoot it. But we almost lost Haruka and Barpuri, and Haruka was barely alright. We hauled the Thrumbo corpses back, and Rudolph ate one. Great. But we did still have one left that we could turn into a Colossal. Nope. He ate the other one, too. Okay, well, there goes our colossal plans, but we still had other stuff. For example, our very first cult sacrifice. Uh, they grow up so fast. By sacrificing Norbert, we could cast a spell from Cthulhu. This spell grew back Haruka's left leg with an improved version. Not to mention that the spell had no cost whatsoever. Although it was a little weird when I saw my friend Troby sacrificed from... Troby. Bugs aside, we were heading into our second winter on the rim. We'd stocked up plenty of supplies, so this would give us an opportunity to shift from food production to finishing the hotel. In order to get moving on our construction, we'd need more colonists. A Ratkin Free Company showed up so we could purchase pawns there. Unfortunately, those pawns were very expensive. Emphasis on the were. Don't like how much money a pawn costs? Me neither. So find the expensive pawn you want to buy and just cap them. You'll lose relations, but not enough to make the faction hostile. Because you damage the pawn, they lose value. After shooting Alara here twice, she went from $1,660 to $485. Then after you buy them, just 10 and they're completely back to normal. It's a lot like corporate tax evasion, except my version isn't legal. Getting Alara was important because she was another researcher we needed for genetics. We'd finally built the gene creation pod, which would allow us to combine our many kinds of genes from genetics traders into creatures. Our first experiment, combining feralisk and boomalope DNA to make a boomalisk. With our hotel nearing completion, cult sacrifices on the horizon, and genetic mutations being turned out, it was time to start the road to summoning Cthulhu. 
One of the missing pieces of our rituals was a good temple. Our current one was cramped and uninspired, so we'd have to make another one later. Another factor in rituals is whether participants are wearing cult robes like what Flim Flam has on. To fix that, we started mass producing Cthulhu masks out of dark young bark obtained from Rudolph. Soon our colonists were looking like the Star Wars trash monster. <clears throat> the Lego version. To stock up on equipment, I bought some pawns from a Skaven trader and arrested them. The issue was, because the pawns still belonged to the Skaven faction, sacrificing them would cause them to be hostile. Or at least it would, if we didn't bribe them with something of equal value. While we prepared for the sacrifices, our genetic mutation finished growing. Poorly. Instead of making a boomalisk, we created a tiny blob of flesh. This wretched creature is struggling to keep breathing. Whilst it doesn't pose any real threat and seems quite friendly, it requires a tremendous amount of love and and attention to find the strength to live another day. Well, great. Now I'm crying. Fleshlings need at least one hug every 24 hours to stay alive. So I put him in the common room where his chances of survival were high. Fleshling one, you will now be known as Hugbert. You are precious. Still, I did want to make some actual genetic abominations, so I threw some Eldritch DNA to the gene morpher. Here's to hoping that whatever comes out doesn't eat us. For our last two sacrifices, I gave Rhino a new leg and Flim Flam a psionic growth. This gave him three strong combat abilities and an extra 20% consciousness. With the sacrifices done, I prepped a transport pod full of the organs we'd borrowed. Lo and behold, we gained 144 relations with the faction, meaning they liked us now more than they did before we sacrificed their people. Diplomacy. Am I right? Even better, I invited their faction for a visit with our now completed hotel, because more people meant more sacrifices. And potential DNA, because our armored Chthonian larva finished hatching. After only a few hits, it'll pretty much down or kill anything, including a bunch of deep ones which raided our colony. As scary as they were, we're worse. Our next genetic creation was Eldritch and Boobalope genes, making this unholy creature. Back to the hotel side of things, our first guests had arrived, which allowed us to explain a funny little mechanic. If you set your colonists to talk with guests, they'll become friends. With enough friends, you can just straight up recruit visitors for a diplomatic relations penalty. I recruited three of our guests, causing the faction to turn hostile. The people we'd recruited were actually really strong and had great stats. Welcome to jail. But our current temple wouldn't be good enough to sacrifice them for higher level spells, so I decided to add a totally new, inconspicuous section to our hotel with premium accommodations, which allowed us to steal two new visitors and have the remaining two still give us a gift for good hospitality. On top of starting construction for our new temple, I also outfitted all our colonists with cultist gear, which looked great. For most of them, Hugbert was also having a grand old time in the common room. You know, I haven't been showing this part because it's kind of boring, but it takes a lot of effort to keep Hugbert alive. I have to lock everyone in this room every couple of days because he just chooses to not nuzzle anyone. If he was anything but this adorable little flesh blob, I would not do this. But he's worth it. It didn't take long to finish the new temple site and really take in that new cult smell. We were almost ready to summon our Dark Lord Cthulhu into the realm of the living. All we needed was a few more sermons and we'd get the spell. But of course, things are never really that easy, are they? A little while ago, I changed my difficulty up to 500% because the raids we got were a little small, so I figured we could handle it. Mechanoids wouldn't be too bad because we had enough animals to swamp them. Pirates are pretty easy due to Flim Flam's psychic lobe and our armored larva. And tribals... Okay, well I guess that's kinda bad, but what are the odds of tribals? Oh. Oh no, 87 pawns all ready to completely overwhelm us. And I hadn't exactly been diligent at making weapons or defenses. Plus our colonists had no armor because apparently being cool is better than being alive. There was literally no way we could win. Or at least, not without Big Daddy Cthulhu. We lined up around the new temple and chanted the famous incantation. Within seconds, every enemy on the map was either running in fear or tearing each other apart. All pawns had gone totally insane, including our own colonists. When the dust settled, virtually every tribal was dead. By this point, we descended to the highest cult level we could, Chosen of Cthulhu, giving us access to the last spell to summon the dark being into the world. We'd need a sacrifice, but we couldn't just use any random person. Person. Galga, as the second cult member of the colony, volunteered. We prepared the ritual room, gathered all of our colonists, and dressed the sacrifice, ready to bring forth the great sleeping one to end the world. Although on second thought, why? We'd built a grand hotel, a wonderful community, and a thriving metropolis. Plus, I mean, we had the best pet in the world, our friend Hu- And with that, existence was gone. For those of you who have been waiting seven months for me to finally make this video, I hope it was worth it. I really do. Press the very real red button below to give Hogwarts 24 more hours to live. Thanks for watching. See ya.